In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom GIMP splash screen so you can go from this to this. The default GIMP splash screen looks pretty good. I think they did a nice job on it, but it looks a little out of place in my GNOME desktop environment. And I just wanted to make one that'll look more at home uh, with my desktop. Now, of course, you can do this with any uh, wallpaper. Um, I've just chosen this uh, default GNOME one. Um, so the first thing you want to do, you want to come up to File, go to New, and uh, we're going to create a new image here. And I'm going to click on the Portrait um, option here. Now, I think the minimum width is 300 pixels. I'm going to make mine a bit wider. I'm going to make it 450. And for the height, I'm going to go 600. And down at Advanced Options, I'm going to choose uh, white as the background color. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to click OK. The first thing I want to do is create the white border that goes around the edge. I'm going to do that by creating some guides first. So I'm going to uh, come up to Image. I'm going to go to Guides. I'm going to click New Guide. So on Horizontal, I'm going to change that to 4%. Click OK. Again, come up to Image. Go to Guides. Create a new guide drop down to vertical, click OK. So you can see how this is starting to show up. Um, now if you don't see these guides, um, you'll want to come up to view and you need to make sure that the show guides option is checked. So I'm going to make it a third one. Go down to image, guides, new guide, and this time on vertical I'm going to change it to 96 and I'll click OK. So there's still 4% on that one side. And the final guide will be horizontal, but instead of making it 96, I want more room at the bottom, so I'm going to change that to 90 and click OK. So when GIMP launches, there's a little progress bar and there's some text, and I want some room down there for that to show up in. The next step is to cut out a piece of that wallpaper and put it in the middle here, but I want to know the exact dimensions of that uh, rectangle in the middle. So I'm going to choose the Rectangular Select tool, and I'm just going to click and drag. And if you look in the tool options, um, I have mine in the bottom right, yours might be uh, over in the bottom left. You can see the size at the bottom. You can see it's 414 pixels by 516 pixels. So I'm going to remember those numbers. And I'm going to come over to the wallpaper. Um, so I'll provide a link in the description to the wallpaper and the um, Wilbur icon for GIMP as well. Um, but I'll come over to the crop tool. And in the tool options, I want to make sure I choose fixed. I want to select portrait. And I'm going to type in those numbers we just saw. So 414 by 516. And now when I click and drag to make the crop, it's going to uh, stay within those dimensions. So I'll come to about here. And I'll click Enter. And I'm cropped, which is great. Uh, but if you actually look down here in the tool options, you can see the size. It's not 414 by 515. If I went to the actual size here, it's, it's quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to crop it down. I'm going to go to Image scale image and you want to make sure that little lock icon is checked and for the width we'll go 414 and the height should automatically fill in I'll click scale at the bottom here so now I'm ready to bring it over into the main image in the layers panel uh, click on the layer click and drag and move over to the tab where your main image is and I'm just going to drop it right in the middle there uh, I'm going to uh, grab my uh, move tool and I'm just going to click and drag it till it ends up right in the center there so if I hide my guides for a second, you can see we have the base of the image here. I've got some extra room at the bottom for the progress bar and text, and I've got the main middle area I want to work with. So I'm just going to close out this wallpaper. I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to discard those changes. I'll click on the Wilbur tab, and just like before, I'm going to click on the uh, layer, and I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to drop it into the middle of my image here. So I'll bring those guides back. And now I could click and drag and move Wilbur where I want him, but he's a little large at first. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to make sure I'm on that layer and I can choose the icon uh, scale or the scale tool. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut I have set up, control T. And in the scale option, I'm going to make sure the little lock is checked. And under 450 or <clears throat> sorry, under 400, I'm going to change that to 350 pixels and I'll select scale. Now I can try and move them in the middle manually, but I want it to be a little more precise than that. So let's just bring them back over there. I'm going to choose the alignment tool. I'm going to click on Wilbur. And in the tool options here, I'm going to choose this one here. It's going to align him in the center, which is awesome. 
So now when I have the move, move tool and I select Wilbur, I can just use the arrow keys to move him, or I can hold down Shift and he'll make uh, bigger movements around. And actually to help out a little bit, I'm going to make another guide. I'm going to go to Guides, Guide by Percent, and on Horizontal, let's set it to 50 and click OK. So yeah, I might move Wilbur uh, down a little bit more, maybe we'll say about there. Uh, the next step is to add some text. So I'm going to select the text tool. Uh, down here at the foreground and background colors, I'm going to swap them out. So white is in the front. And you can see in my text uh, option toolbox there, the color is set to white. You can change it there as well. Uh, for the font, uh, let's go to Open Sans. And I'm going to choose a bold one, so it's a bit bigger. And for the size of the text, I'm going to choose 136. Now when I begin to type, I'm going to make sure uh, my caps locks is on. So it's all capitals. And I'm going to type in GIMP. So we'll move that up here for now. And then I'm going to choose the text tool again. And I'm going to bring down the font size to go, go with 18. Again, I'm still in all caps. And then I'm going to type this out. So the GNU image manipulation program. And I can come onto my move tool and start moving around that layer as well. Um, I want to make one change here, GIMP. Um, the space in, in, in between the letters is quite large. I'm actually going to reduce that. So with the text tool, highlight it. I just double clicked it to fill it all. And in the tool options, I'm going to bring down that space in between the letters, maybe by about five or six, we'll try. Click on the move tool again. So again, I'm going to align these up perfectly. I'm going to choose the alignment tool. I'm going to start down here on this uh, GNU image manipulation text. Center it so it's very close to center. I'm going to check on the GIMP one, make that one center as well. You can see that one was a little more off. Um, so I'm going to hide the guides and just kind of go with what I feel like. So I have the move tool selected. Um, I'm going to choose the text down here. And again, with the arrow keys, I'm going to move it up a little closer. Actually, maybe about to there. <clears throat> I'm going to bring the GIMP text down a bit. We'll bring it down to about here. And then the Wilbur icon, I mean, obviously this is all up to you. I like bringing him down a little bit closer to the text. Maybe he's, well, we'll put him right about there. So I'm pretty close to done here. Um, I really like how this has turned out. Um, one problem I have with it is the background's a pretty light blue, which I like, but the text is white and you can't see it quite as well. So I'm gonna go onto that layer with the blue background. I'm gonna right click and choose duplicate layer. I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm going to go from normal mode to multiply. So you can see here's a before, here's an after that's gotten a, a much darker blue. Um, you could export this right away and be finished. I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit. Um, maybe I'll bring it down by about half. And uh, so there's before, there's after. It's easier to read that text. It's, it's a nice blue and I'm quite happy with it all together. So when you're done with the image, um, you just want to go file, export or export as and export it as a PNG file or, or possibly a JPEG. Um, when you're done with it all, and I, I can just, well, I'll move on to the next screen here. You need to copy that exported file into your GIMP folder. Now uh, in Linux, this is a hidden file. So you want to click on, well, however your file manager handles it, you want to make sure you show hidden files so you can go from home to the hidden GIMP folder. And I have a folder called splashes here. Now by default, it's not there. So you need to create the splashes folder. And that's where you're going to copy the, um, the splash screen that you made in GIMP. Now, if you're on Windows or Mac, it's going to be a different folder location. Um, I'll post a link in the description uh, and it'll tell you uh, where you need to copy that file. But uh, just so we can see it in action, I'm going to discard these changes. I'll just close this out. And now when I launch GIMP, you're going to see that splash screen that I made instead of the default one. <clears throat> and I think that looks a lot better uh, in the GNOME desktop environment. Now you notice that it, it was actually a little slow for the image to come up. And I think that maybe will improve after I reset. I'm not sure. Um, but if you know why it's slow to bring the image uh, at first, I, I would love to know how to speed that up because um, it doesn't look as good when you're waiting. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I like doing these fun kind of things. It's a little more design work than uh, uh, manipulating photos. Um, so I hope you all learned something and you make some splash screens of your own. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. If you'd like to learn more, 
please consider purchasing the open source photography course available at rileybrandt.com lessons. More information about the course and links to all my social media sites can be found in the description below.